What's happening guys? Okay, we're off again. It's about 6.40 in the morning. I think it's Sunday. Sunday morning. Just leaving Swan Reach. And uh, beautiful morning. Supposed to be a bit of wind coming up uh, this morning. But it's only up to about 18, 20 kilometres an hour. And that'll be coming over more our left shoulder. So a bit of a breeze behind us. So I thought we'd get up and get going early. Um, I'm not too sure how far I'm going. I've sort of got in the back of my mind, I might do a long one today and uh, get to Blanchetown. So we'll see what happens, I could stop earlier. I've got my two fuel tanks rigged up and tested it yesterday so I can change the line over while the motor's going and it all seemed to work in practice. So uh, I'll go for probably about three and a half hours on this tank and then we'll slow it down to an idle in the middle of the river and I'll change the hose over to on the motor to the other tank and hopefully that works and I can get uh, a good six hours or so so I'm not too sure how long it's going to take me I'm thinking about <coughs> excuse me I'm thinking about six hours seven hours and we'll just see how we go but uh, let's uh, turn the camera around and show you what I'm looking at again so we're about three or four hundred meters from Swan Reach there's a nice little campsite over the left. There's been a few caravans there all over the weekend. Got the beautiful Swan Reach cliffs. And a little bit cloudy. But it's supposed to be uh, not too bad of a day today except for a little bit of wind coming up later. So uh, I'll show you anything interesting. We've got the sun just starting to come up over the cliffs behind me and poke through the clouds beautiful morning so far we're about five kilometers upstream from Swan Reach and got these beautiful cliffs So we're just at the 262 kilometre mark. That's uh, Wagon Wheels Landing, I think, over there. We've just come to the crosses on the tree back behind me, which means I've got to cut across the river over here. And I don't know whether you can see the cross on the tree over there. So it must get a bit shallow in the middle there. Probably no worries in this boat, but uh, we'll do what you're supposed to do. And we're probably just over halfway to Blanchetown, so everything going okay at the moment. So another one of those blue signs with the white cross where we've got to cut back across to the other side of the river. We're actually at Olsen's Landing and out in the middle they've got it says in the book training spurs so uh, we go around those and you probably can't see it but at about a 45 degree angle over there is another blue sign with a white cross that we've got to head to so it must get a bit shallow there it's showing about 10 feet deep at the moment and uh, we'll just start turning across towards that sign and another beautiful windmill closer look at the windmill at Olsen's Landing and we're just heading across back to the other blue sign up here it's got to about seven feet deep here so a little bit shallow so we'll head across there then go down along the bank for a little while and we're probably about three quarters of the way to Blanchetown Just going past Castle's Landing. Kingfisher. Last cliffs before Blanchetown. And uh, Blanchetown just up around the corner, about a kilometre, maybe a kilometre and a half. And we'll find a nice little spot to moor up for a night or two. Uh, still not too sure where I'm going. We got uh, the Blanchetown Bridge up there and Lock One. 
and that should be the caravan park so I'm thinking just up in there there should be a little spot to moor up we'll give it a go And here we are, Blanchetown. Great little trip. I think it took me about, I don't know, five and three quarter hours. Had a bit of wind behind me. Uh, I did the old change the fuel over while we were moving, just the hose. All went perfect to plan. And uh, yeah, cruised up here and got this little spot just between the caravan park and the lock. So uh, you can see the lock in the background. So I'm gonna get a few things sorted, probably stay here for a couple of nights and uh, have a bit of a walk around Blanchetown and maybe even sneak to the pub for tea tonight I reckon so uh, we'll catch you guys later So chicken schnitzel with garlic prawn sauce, looking pretty good, I'll come back with my review in a minute. Okay so there we go, just finished it, chicken schnitzel with garlic prawns, best score so far on the trip, 8.6, that's my review. So here we are, Blanchetown, got the lock behind me and the two bridges. We're going to go for a bit of a walk around Blanchetown and uh, I studied up a bit of history last night so uh, we'll see how we go if I remember any of it. Let's go for a bit of a walk. So over here we've got Lock 1 which was opened in 1922 if my memory serves me correctly and we're going to go through the lock in the morning. And Blanchetown established 1855 I think and uh, they actually built this town because there's another little town downstream called Maundi Maundi or something like that but it used to get flooded out all the time so they decided to make another town up here so uh, up where you've got a, a bit more of a hill where you can build it up and not have to worry about getting flooded We'll go for a walk down and uh, check out the lock. And uh, yeah, we'll be sneaking through it in the morning. We've got Darren, the lock master, gonna help me through. And big thanks to Darren this morning. He came and picked me up and went up the road and uh, filled up a couple of jerry cans with fuel. So, saved me a long uh, walk up a fairly steep hill. So, thanks for that. So here we have the lock, plenty of pelicans out over the other side waiting to get a feed of fish. Got this little sneaky one down here, he's waiting for him to come through the little uh, outlet to the gate here. Looking at the levels of upstream to downstream, looks like it's about one and a half metres. That's the difference, I thought it might have been a little bit more. And this is the lock chamber where you go in, 
we'll be going through in the morning so I'll give them a call they'll drain all of that water out down to this level and uh, actually a couple of fish just coming through the hole down there the pelican needs to get up there so yeah they'll drain that out so it gets to this level open the gates and drive through grab a rope which uh, Darren will throw to us and uh, hold on while they pump the water back up it's going to be a little bit tricky with only one in my boat and I haven't got side rails so I think I'm just going to have to grab hold at the front although Darren said uh, seeing it's getting pumped up we could tie the front and uh, go down the back and grab another rope so we'll see what happens we'll sort it out but uh, I'll go through nice and early in the morning about 8 o'clock they open so there's no wind and then we'll head up stream try and get about halfway to Morgan couldn't go past an old river windmill without filming it just upstream at lock one and the two bridges upstream from the lock at Blanchetown got the old bridge there that was built in 1963 I think I said and the new bridge got a lot more trucks road trains going through and I think that was opened in 1998 or was it 2008 one of those two Got a nice little marina here, right under the new bridge. So that's going to be the end of this video guys uh, we made it through the lock uh, went uh, fairly smoothly and uh, big thanks to Darren for getting us through so uh, we're going to head up to Morgan now uh, we'll catch you guys next week and don't forget to subscribe leave a comment if you've got any questions press the like button all of that stuff and uh, let's try and get a few more subscribers going catch you guys later